Hi everyone, I'm Zhao Hua from Peking University, and I'm happy today to present our work Budget Constraint Auctions with Anna Short Price, Strategic Equivalence and Structural Properties. This is a joint work with Mingwei from Stanford, Chang from Northwestern, Ji Cheng from Columbia, Zheng, Yukun, Zhihua from Tencent, and my advisor Xiao Tian. So this work is motivated by the online ad market, where we notice that advertisers are usually budget constrained, and their budget constraints should be ensured by the mechanism. Another key observation is that in the ideal world, the mechanisms would take advertisers' value distributions as input, for example, the Myerson auction. However, in real worlds, the advertisement platforms could at most learn advertisers' bid distributions. And even if we take IC auction or truthful auctions, due to the complex environment that the buyers lie in, the, these mechanisms could fail to work correctly. So, may, so we may face the fact that the platform would never know value distributions of buyers and they could only see the buyer's bid distributions, while the value distributions are private information of the buyers. And we wonder what would happen to budget constraint auctions in this setting. So we come to the auction model part and there's a seller and we have n bidders in auction. And here we use the quantile function terminology to, for the convenience of the formula. And here we suppose that QI is bidder I's quantile, which is drawn uniformly from zero to one. And the value is function is VI, which maps the QI, the quantile, to the value. And so to understand it, uh, you could see the VI as a mapping from, from the uniform distribution to the value distribution. And we consider budget constrained auctions. And so each uh, buyer has a budget of row I. And we consider the stochastic setting, where bidders would take fixed bidding strategies, and we only want the budget to be feasible in expectation. And we use VI tilde as the bidding function of the, uh, of the bidder I. So VI here should be a private function of the bidder, and VI tilde should be public. And on the seller side, we suppose that he has an opportunity to cost lambda which is strictly positive. And the opportunity cost here is that uh, when the item is sold, the total revenue of the seller is the sum of all payments from buyers minus the opportunity cost. And our first question is that uh, when the bidding, uh, bidding distribution is much high while the budget is really low, how can the seller control the budget of each buyer? And we achieve this through parameterized mechanisms. So we use x as the allocation function and p as the payment function. So theta is the parameter tuple and b is the bidding profile of all buyers. Uh, so now, uh, according to our previous observation, uh, we see that the value quantile function vi is private while the bidding quantile function vi tilde is public. So vi tilde can be seen as the strategy of the buyer. And we now write the bu budget constraint, which is done with respect to the parameter tuple theta and the public information v tilde, rather than the value quantile functions v. So pi here is the interim payment function. And the bidder i's utility is also done with respect to the interim allocation xi, which is also derived with theta and v tilde. And here, since vi is the private information, so bidder's i's utility should be, should be computed with respect to VI rather than VI tilde. Okay, cool. So we now formalize a game between the seller and all buyers. And in the first step, the seller would choose a mechanism X and P, which ensures monotone allocation. And it also has a predefined rule for theta, which ensures budget feasibility and individual rationality. So here are the budget feasible constraint and the IR constraint, which I think should be familiar to you. And bidder i's private information is the value distribution or the value quantile function, which are equivalent. And the public information is the bidding quantile function and the budget. And with the public information, the uh, parameter tuple theta is computed according to this predefined rule. And finally, bidder i gets her utility while the seller gets his revenue. So the revenue here, notice that as long as the item is sold, we need to minus the opportunity cost lambda. 
Cool. And we consider five parameterized mechanisms. And the first one is the bid discount first price auction, which maps the bid bi tilde to a scaled bid with the parameter alpha i. And the winner pays the original bid bi tilde. So here we also will let, uh, take the opportunity cost lambda as a reserve price. So the winning shaded bid should be no less than the opportunity cost lambda. And that is the same for all other four mechanisms. So here, this mechanism control the budget by lessen the probability that a, 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 a buyer would win because when this value is when all of these values are smaller than lambda, then the item is not sold. And the pacing first price auction, which is more standard, the, we also has a parameter a shading parameter, but the winner pays the shaded bid beta i times vi tilde. So this mechanism controls the expenditure not only by controlling the winning probability, but also by lessening the, 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 the payment. And we have the optimal auction, which is incentive compatible given by this paper, which also maps the, the bid to the virtual bid and a uh, scaled virtual bid, and the winner pays the minimum winning original bid. And we have, uh, we have two variants of second price auctions which are like which resembles bid discount first price auction and pays and first price auction, but the winner pays the minimum winning bid. Okay, so in bid discount SPA, the winner pays the minimum winning original bid, while in pacing SPA, the winner pays the minimum winning shading bid. And we suppose that all parameters lie in zero and one to ensure the, the IR constraint. So now, we focus on the seller side first, and we ask the question, how should the seller set the parameters to maximize his revenue, right? And our intuition is to exhaust each bidder's budget because the payment of each bidder forms the, the revenue of the, the seller. So if we can exhaust their budget, the seller should win more, okay? So we take the budget extracting condition which says that the budget feasibility and the IR constraint, at least one of them should be binding. So that is to say, if we can increase each buyer's payment or winning probability, then we should increase this until uh, her payment reaches her budget. Okay, so this, this concept comes from this paper again, and we have a theorem showing that this condition is good, for example, for first price auctions and optimal auction, they exist and they exist for symmetric second price auctions. And also they are optimal for the seller in first price auctions, the optimal auction and the symmetric pacing second price auction. So that is to say we only need to consider this kind of mechanisms. And so now we come to our main result showing that under budget extracting, the BDFPA and the optimal auction leads to the same set of Nash equilibrium outcomes. So this is our main result, and I give, I'll give a short interpretation here. So, and, and this is done with respect to the and a short prior game, as we just mentioned. So BDFPA is a simple auction form, which is a variant of first price auction. Well, the optimal auction is, of course, optimal under the IC constraint, but it's a bit complicated. So this is a simple versus optimal result in the sense that in practice, when we do not know the value distribution of buyers, we can take first price auctions, which they give the same, uh, equ uh, same, same out output in, equi uh, in equilibrium, okay? And another side result is that uh, in the symmetric case where all buyers are symmetric, all five budget extracting mechanisms lead to the same set of possible outcome profiles. So we now compare our main result with other non results. For example, the first is the revenue equivalence theorem, which I think you should be familiar, but if you're not, informally, it says that if two mechanisms always yield the same allocation, then they bring the same revenue for the seller at the symmetric Bayesian Nash equilibrium. So our result is different from this in four ways, at least. First, we are in a, a, a private value prior <coughs> information structure. And second, uh, we are budget constrained. And third, uh, the allocation of BDFPA and BROA are not always the same. And at last, uh, our setting can, our result can work for the asymmetric setting. And 
Other previous results, for example, Tang and Zeng uh, so show the equivalence between FP and Myerson in the end short prior game. And in sponsor search auction, this paper showed the equivalence. <sighs> Sorry, should I do this from the start? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this paper showed the equivalence between the GFP and Myerson. And we argue here that the budget constraint setting, especially in the Bayesian setting, is much more complicated. And we also discuss structural properties of these two uh, this mechanisms. And to give a okay, to give a short summary, we give properties of budget extracting of BDFPA and F PFPA. For example, we give sufficient and necessary conditions of the budget extracting tuple and their behaviors. And at last, we deal with computing issues of these tuples. And we also show the dominance relationships on the seller's revenue when all buyers do not bid strategically. So in this setting, BDFPA behaves better than the optimal auction because it's non-IC and behaves also better than the pacing first price auction. And since the optimal auction is the optimal in the IC sense, so it is better than variants of second price auctions. Cool, so that's all for my talk. And uh, uh, I'll make a lot of details here and confide in our paper. So thank you.